There's a big difference between talking and reporting, especially right now with a fire hose worth of news coming your way. You know what helps? Having reporters in the field. I'm Brad Milkey from ABC News, and that's what we've got on ABC's daily podcast, Start Here. Every morning, Start Here takes you across the country and around the world for a quick, smart look at the stories that matter. It's fast, it's straightforward, and sometimes, gasp, news can even be fun. So let's meet up tomorrow morning. Listen to Start Here wherever you get your podcasts. February is going to be a busy month for Las Vegas. We got the Super Bowl, Valentine's Day, and on top of that, it's a leap year, a whole extra day. So today on CityCast Las Vegas, I'm joined by radio DJ Heather Collins and executive producer Sonia Cho Swanson, and we're going to help you make the most of February in Las Vegas. And if you're new here, welcome. Stick around for the week because we talk about food every Thursday and we have a chatty roundup of the news every Friday. It's A lot of fun. It's Monday, February 5th. I'm David Figler, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Sonia and Heather, welcome to CityCast Las Vegas Guide to February. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks so much. Hey, Heather, we hear you on local radio and you're making waves as a Vegas influencer. (laughs) We're so glad to have you on the show today talking about things to do in February. Welcome, welcome. I actually want to be called the anti-influencer because Ah, I do not follow the rules of influencing at all. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. out here paying for my food. I'm out here spilling the real tea because I feel like... I feel like as uh, there's so many, do you know there's over 150 Vegas influencers? Oh, yeah. Wow. And you know what I found out is that a whole ton of them don't even live here in Las Vegas. That's what's crazy. <gasps> now, Heather, you bring local cred. Or they just cred. moved here. <laughs> or they just moved here, right. But you bring local cred. So tell us about that. Um, so I was actually born in Vegas uh, at Sunrise Children's Hospital in 1990. Um, I remember growing up in Vegas before Red Rock Casino was even built. Before I remember when we got an Ikea, I was so excited. I felt like that we officially became a city when we got an Ikea. Right. <laughs> I was like, F we the, made F, it. F the Raiders. It was all about getting that Ikea. <laughs> I mean, Ikea. So the reason why I thought that was because Ikea will only put an Ikea in if there's a certain population in a city. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That. All right. Moving on, moving on, moving on, because we got a lot to talk about for February. Uh, and I got to ask this. It is coming up fast and furious. Super Bowl. So, Heather, straight up, are you celebrating or avoiding? Can I tell you, I think I'm celebrating all the way up till Saturday. Then I'm going to take a nap on Saturday (laughs) and then (laughs) attempt to go out and watch the Super Bowl somewhere. Um, There are some great places that are going to be showing the Super Bowl. But honestly, most of them are already sold out. So if you haven't figured out where you're watching the Super Bowl yet, if you're not watching it at home, you should probably look into that now. Okay, so for Super Bowl watching, what are your recommends? So one of my favorites is the downtown Las Vegas Event Center. They put Mm -hmm. out turf out there, and they put out these great tables. They have it. It's honestly a big, giant, fun party. We used to broadcast from there every year. Um, Another one that I saw recently was a luminarium inside Area 15. Um, They have it really cool. Of course, all of these cost money. I actually think the one at... Las Vegas Event Center doesn't cost money, but obviously if you want to buy food and drinks, it costs money. And if you want a table, it costs money. But Mm -hmm. um, those are my personal two favorites right now. Of course, you can just go check out a sports bar at one of the many casinos. But I feel like a lot of places, I'm actually shocked I'm not seeing more places and more influencers talking about where to watch the Super Bowl as a local. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just got tickets for something. I'm like a little embarrassed, but also a little excited about it. Um, Guy Fieri is doing an event at the Link Promenade. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Guy's Flavor Town tailgate. There are free tickets, but it's like I'm. They're expecting a crowd of like thousands and thousands. So I actually shelled out for guaranteed entry tickets. What's crazy is that last week they were twenty bucks a piece. Then I go to buy them a few days later, and it's up to fifty bucks. And that's oh, only for guaranteed entry, and I'm still going to have to pay for food separately. What, when is this? Oh, it's happening on Sunday and Super Bowl Sunday. So all happening before the before the actual. But here's Super the problem. Oh, mm-hmm. No, no hate to that, but what's the? Here's the problem. Where are you going to watch the game after? Now you're stuck on the strip with nowhere to watch. 
oh, I'm leaving this trip. I'm going to a friend's oh. house afterwards. Yeah, okay, I'm like gotcha, not even gotcha. going to... Yeah. But the cool thing about this event is they actually have local vendors like Forte Tapas and Yukon oh, Pizza. Fine. Yeah. So, like, so I'm like, I want to oh. go support local. See, you I know? didn't know that. I already passed on it. And now I'm hearing like my favorite pizza place is going to be there. Yukon. Yeah. I mean, you guys even know about it. I didn't even get a press release about it. So obviously. Well, that's why I'm... we have CityCast's Guide to February. They so everyone's going to know. So we're t- with three yeah. people, we better figure out all the things going right. on in Vegas. Right. So right. you know, where is that located? It's behind the high roller at the link. Oh, cool, cool. Are you going to go watch the game somewhere, Heather? Are you going to go try to go actually watch it on a big TV or a sports I book or something? I want to go watch it out and about because I think it'd be fun to be on the strip when it happens. Um, as time gets closer, I'm starting to realize it's probably not more of a realistic thing. But I can tell you about all the things leading up to Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lay them out. Okay, so the opening night, I think, is one of the coolest experiences. Um, it's actually at Allegiant Stadium. Tickets are only $30. And what it Ooh. is is you bring a pair of headphones. Don't forget your headphones. And they do interviews with both teams that are playing in the Super Bowl. It's the first time that the teams are in the Allegiant Stadium together to discuss what is going on, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're going to... um also have everything wrapped so you can actually like take pictures in there if you're not going to the Super Bowl. So you get to be a part of the Super Bowl experience without going to the actual Super Bowl which I thought was really cool. And obviously everyone wants to see Travis Kelsey in the flesh. So if this is your goal in life, 30 bucks, I'll pay 30 bucks to go see Travis Kelsey. Um, another cool thing that they're doing is uh, the Experience Fan Zone at Mandalay Bay. I think it opens on Wednesday and I think it opens every day at three o'clock. And there's going to be, you know, some retired athletes there, some other athletes there um, doing autographs. The trophies are going to be there. Every like everything that you want to experience for Super Bowl and NFL is going to be in this one area. There's going to be games, there's going to be like giveaways. From what I heard, it's going to be like a big, giant, like NFL blowout party inside oh. there from i think wednesday thursday friday and i think it goes till saturday um another cool thing is paramount plus took over the mirage and they built out I gondolas yeah. yeah they built out like some kind of like tracking set like like floating little gondolas like if you were on a mountain yeah um, they built over the existing volcano uh, and made I it into a that. snowy mountain i hate yeah. it i'm sorry you guys r.i.p oh. volcano i'm not a fan of the snowy mountain am i wrong well, it's gonna think? get blown up anyway because they're gonna put uh, the maybe giant guitar maybe. i hear uh, all sorts of rumors that they might try to still be saving that really cheese why would they try volcano. to why would they try to look as because... a vegas local and born and raised i'm and i you guys grew up here i really hate when they get rid of our vegas heritage but at the same time, do you know how excited I am being a radio DJ that the Hard Rock is going to be on the Strip and not behind the Strip? Like, mm-hmm. I'm so right? stoked. I'm mm-hmm. so stoked. So what's stoked. happening, so, Heather, what's happening over there for Paramount, though? I mean, I we got we got as far as the mountain and then we went freaking oh. <laughs> out. So, so I yeah. think they're just going to be promoting their shows, but it's going to be a really interactive experience. And obviously it's going to be NFL based. And like, it's going to, there's also, wait, hang on. There's also another thing that they're doing. The Frito-Lays people sent me a, a email saying that they're going to have a Cheetos chapel somewhere. <laughs> Are you serious? For people to get married? I don't know if they're going to get married or you just like do a walkthrough. I think that's at New York, New York. Um, I feel like there's so much TikTok is going to do a tailgate with Gwen Stefani. Don't know how to get in that, but I know it's happening somewhere. Um, <gasps> so so how should ends. people like be able to track what's happening almost in real time if they wanted to venture out probably so, to the strip area to celebrate? All the NFL things, um, the actual official NFL things are on the NFL One Pass app. Um, if you want to download that, uh, that will get you all the information about those NFL exclusive events like that the um, head co- or the committee put on. Um, for the other things, follow Race in Vegas. I'll start posting about them. There you go. And by the way, yeah. the Paramount thing is free. Oh, nice. You have to get oh, cool. a ticket and reserve, but it is free according right. to what I saw on the internet. What about counter-programming? Is there anything to do that weekend around town that doesn't involve the big game? I don't think so. I feel like that, that <laughs> is officially like taking over. I, I keep telling everyone, everyone's like, hey, do you want to go do this next week? And I'm like, nope, I am officially in big game mode as of next week. I'm trying to go to everything. I guess there's always, you know, a great opportunity to use that weekend where everyone's glued to their TV to go check out things like Red Rock and get the reservation that you weren't able to get before. Oh, that's a really good piece of advice. Yeah. Facts. Uh Facts. Um, So what about Valentine's Day in Vegas? What what kind of things do you have in store? 
I am so anti Valentine's Day because I've been single oh, no. for seven years. But at the oh. same time, I do love a cute little Valentine's Day moment. Honestly, if you're trying to get a reservation for a steak restaurant right now for Valentine's Day, I think you're out of luck at this point. Unless you um, do like 9 p.m. or 5 p.m. or something. Meatless. You're going meatless for Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'm not going meatless. I'm going off the strip, maybe not steak. Like one of my favorite like cute romantic spots is Americana in Desert Shores. It's like oh. right on the lake. It's very, very cute. I want to focus more like on the the girls' events, if anything. Because like, you can go to Lip Lab inside Fashion Show and make lipsticks. I'm doing that with my friends. Oh, fun. Um, we all get to make our own lipsticks. And I think it's a cute little like girls' date for Valentine's Day. Uh-huh. Um, for all my single people out there, there is going to be an event at, um, is it called Proper Eats Inside Aria? Is that what the food hall's called? Mm-hmm. Is it Proper yeah. Eats? Uh, yeah. Proper Eats is doing an event for singles, guys and girls. You could sign up and it's going to be like a mixer for single people on February 15th. If you want to go meet some singles, uh, supposedly they have like 200 girls RSVP for this and only 20 guys. Uh Oh, oh, my. So guys, how very, how very non Las Vegas <laughs> guys. Usually, uh, if, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, 100%. So, guys, if you're looking for a girl, there is going to be hundreds of beautiful ones at Proper Eats on February 15th. But for those who are in a couple, I've just always been like a, a, I don't want to be traditional Valentine's Day. Like I want to be like, let's go to a pottery painting class. There's a really cool place in Centennial that you can make rugs, like design your own rugs, which I thought was really cute, like date idea. Uh, going to restaurants that maybe are not like the fanciest, but like unique and different. Like there's a really great place off of Rampart and Lake Mead. Oh man, I'm blanking on all my names. I should have wrote these down. Hang on. I'll tell you guys what, is what it we're thai- looking. It's not the Thai place, is it? It might be the Thai place. What is it called? Uh, it's uh, N- Nitaya's. Uh, yes, it's that. Secret Thai, yep. whatever. Oh my God. What's it called? Nitaya's. N-I-T-T-A-Y-A. I love that place. Nitaya's. That place is great. Yeah. And I feel like people are sleeping on it. <laughs> yeah. So I always like to go to restaurants that are not in the like the norm. Like that's a great time yeah. to go test out a new restaurant or go do something fun together. There's also a lot of great local businesses that do like chocolate covered strawberries. And like that's a fun gift versus getting flowers for someone. LV.sweetspot on Instagram. She makes really beautiful chocolate covered strawberries. But I will say this just came up on my uh, Instagram today. TSP Baking Company in North Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. They're making anti-Valentine's Day cookies and brownies. Oh, my God. What does that even look like? So if you're (laughs) single, uh, you can get a brownie that's black with white writing on it that says, like, F love or (laughs) love sucks. Or, or leave me you, alone. Uh, I mean this by myself. <laughs> yeah. Or this is all mine. Um, yeah. You could pre-order them so you could actually get whatever you want on them. And then um, they have the uh, regular sugar cookies that just say like the traditional like heart candy sayings like uh, I miss you. I mine. love you. Or yeah, all be that. mine. So you could either go ver- either route. There's some for the bitter loveless people of the world or there's the cookies for the ones that have a romantic partner. That is so funny. I love that. And I love your advice for getting off the beaten path and getting to like the local neighborhoods because that's 100 percent the route I go for Valentine's Day. Like I will never go to the strip. I will never go downtown on Valentine's Day. I'm so sorry. No. Like they deserve the support and I'm glad they're getting tons of it. But like I love getting into those like neighborhood areas. And I'm glad you mentioned um, Rampart and Lake Mead because um, out there on on that side of town and like the sort of northwest side of town is a tiny French restaurant that I feel like got a lot of shine several years ago that's been kind of overlooked lately, but it's called Oh La La French Bistro. Oh, and they're just solid. They're just solid. I thought you were going to say Marche Bacchus because yeah. that place is fun too. That is an that's classy. This is this is like a, just a really tiny little strip mall restaurant, and they're just like so good. And they're not over the top fancy or anything like that. You're not going to pay strip prices for a French meal, but it's so cozy and sweet and romantic. And I think they're doing like a seventy five dollar prefix Valentine's Day dinner. So see, okay. that's great. Exactly. That's great. Exactly. See, I also like celebrating Valentine's Day ahead, like maybe catching a concert with my loved one or whatever. Aww. And there's so many interesting residencies that are popping up uh, just before Valentine's Day. Did you hear about some of those, Heather? Like, uh, well, of course, the one everyone's kind of waiting for is the Wu Tang. That's starting up. Oh, on Valentine's Day? On the, I think it's like the ninth. 
Oh, her okay. First, I was like, yeah. I don't know if I oh. want to go see Wu Tang on Valentine's Day. <laughs> no, Maybe but Del? I'm talking about lead up, right? Lead up. So oh, you got like, lead up, lead up. Well, yeah. again, I feel like I'll be honest. I feel like I'm such in Super Bowl mode until the 11th that I'm probably not going to think about anything else Valentine's Day related until the 12th. <laughs> I wow. feel like that's Fair. everyone's. Everyone is busy working. All my friends in media are like, don't talk to me. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. I'm sure a lot of people who work on this trip are going to be like, don't talk to me. I'm working. Trying right. to wow. make their their millions that weekend on tips because all the big people are going to be in town. <gasps> right. Yeah. yeah. Well, sorry, sorry, Bruno Mars. Sorry, you two. Heather's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> I just feel like the Super Bowl is such a bit like as a girl, if I had a boyfriend, I'd be like, yeah, we'll do Valentine's Day on like the 18th. Like, that sounds great. <laughs> that sounds great. I'm worried about this right now because I feel like this is such a big and amazing thing for our city. True. Right. True. True. Like, true. Yeah. When have we ever gotten all of the shine put on us? This is like mm -hmm. the biggest event we've ever had in this city. Yeah. No, I mean, it's going to definitely dominate February. But, you know, like I said, I don't want to forget about those great musicians who do pop up here and do things. I mean, even New Edition is coming back for the end of the month, too. I love mm -hmm. that, too. I think February 28th over at the Encore. So a lot of good stuff coming up. There is a lot of great concerts. And you know what? Those are great gifts for Valentine's Day. Oh, after. Hey. After. I love the way you think. <laughs> I'm going to change mode just a little bit. Uh, I mean, you know, February is kind of a transition time. It's change of weather. People are getting ready for a little bit of spring cleaning, maybe change out the wardrobe or whatever. Heather, I know because I'm a follower now um, that you've discovered a new favorite shopping habit. Mm, thrift shopping. Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us I, about okay. your, your thrift options in February. Okay. So hang on. I don't, I got yelled at for calling it thrift shopping because people were like, that's not thrifting because thrifting is going to savers where everything's $5. This is more vintage shopping. And oh, I was like, okay. okay. Interesting. I, I, way, I didn't know there was a difference. I didn't know there was a difference. I, it's I used think clothes. you're good. It's used so clothes. Where, where, where are you going in February, Heather? Okay, so on, you know Main Street on downtown? Uh -huh. Okay. There's a street. If you're sitting on Main Street to the left, the next street over, that everyone is sleeping on all those little thrift shop vintage stores. First one on the end that I could think of is Alt Rebel. That's my favorite in town. Is this is this commerce? That street commerce? It's like commerce. Charles. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Commerce. You guys, do you yeah. think I'm being born and raised? I would know these names, but I'm. Horrible. Well, it never was a fun spot to just hang out and walk for the years yeah. that we were all growing up, right? But now it's hot, hot. Yeah, yeah. it was scary. It was like warehouses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was scary. Absolutely. Um, well, but, there just wasn't huh? cool stuff there. There was a lot of garages, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But now, well, let's be real. It was a little scary. <laughs> okay. I it agree. Was with a little scary. Yeah. I mean, that was my neighborhood. <laughs> I, I'm, Valley, female, I'm Valley I High School. Walking. I, okay. <laughs> if, as a female, I'm not walking down that street by myself at six o'clock at night. It's just not happening. Fair enough. True. All right. So um, Alt Rebel, which, by the way, is about to move to Main Street uh, big time. But right oh, now they're it? still on Commerce. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know that? I don't. And I follow them religiously. I live two blocks away. I am always over uh, there. Oh, yeah. okay. What, what, is, gotcha. what is Alt Rebel? It's a yeah, vintage the, shop? Yeah. They buy, so they, you can go sell clothes there, but they like buy really cool like band t-shirts. They have oh. really cool like vintage purses that are designer. They have, they're just like very edgy. Like they're almost like, I think like a cooler Buffalo Exchange, which is on Main Street. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Buffalo Exchange, I feel like takes a lot of like Forever 21 right. and Zara and H&M. Uh -huh. While this place is looking for your old mom's, Vegas uh, Riviera t-shirts. Right. They want the old vintage Vegas. They want old, really cool ripped up jeans. Like they're just a little bit more edgy. They are a little bit more expensive than like Buffalo Exchange. But honestly, it's totally worth it. If I could find a Lovitz frozen custard t-shirt from like the 90s, that would be like the dream. Oh my Chef God. Kiss. Yes. Good Wolf is down there. I don't think they're a vintage shop. They have a couple vintagey things. They have more new stuff. That's a great store. There was one particular store down there that I walked into and I was like, oh, wait, this might be my new favorite store. It's Ooh. called Sin Amore Collections. Oh, yeah. Um, have you been there, David? I, I have. I, I'm just I'm always I'm a fixture down there. If people really wanted to stalk me, it's easy. Just go to the arts district. OK, perfect. Um, Eric Kabik. So the, what drawed me into the store was they had a huge giant pictures of. Um, different rock artists that have performed in Vegas. And I think- Yeah, Eric, the great Eric photographer, he's been on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has? Oh my God, I love mm -hmm. Eric. Eric he's was awesome. always 
I, so I got my start in radio by being a concert photographer. And Eric was always oh. so nice to me in the pit. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. Eric was always kind. I always loved his work. We have some of his work hanging in the studio at the radio station. Um, phenomenal photographer. But they have a whole wall in there of his work. And I, that's what drew me into the store. I was like, whoa, look at these photos. But she's got, like, if you're looking for that rock and roll, like, vibe, but vintage and thrifted, she's your girl. She's your girl. And the cool thing is I found out she will custom make pieces for you. So I found a red leather jacket used in New York City over the weekend, and I'm going to bring it to her, and she's going to pin it and uh, spray it with spray paint and make it look really cool for me. Oh, my God. So she can customize shit like that. That's amazing. So she might be my new favorite store on commerce. Uh huh. Fine. There's also a Kim Collective down there, and I, I – often pick up yes. like old school vintagey stuff that's in that shop although they do have new stuff and you know they're, they, they're a good uh workshop for creators in in the community i mean i gotta say the vegas community as a large like i feel like there's a lot of cool stuff in that area that people are sleeping on like i saw mm. there was like a rollerblading place down there that they have like mm-hmm. a half pipe in um oh, nice cute, yeah, cute little skate store. shop So, you know, February down in the Arts District, great time to explore it. Don't forget Commerce. Don't forget um, even First Street, just all the little places around there. It's Main Street's the main show, but not the only show. Yeah, no, I think people don't venture out to the other streets very often. Totally. Yeah. All right. Well, boy, this is a lot of info, but let's get a little more in, maybe rapid fire. Uh, One piece of advice to fellow Las Vegans for making the most out of February, who have a whole extra day this year. Uh, go out and experience all the cool things for the Super Bowl has to offer. Like you said, Guy Fieri, the Paramount thing. Go enjoy it. Go for once on the strip and experience the Super Bowl craziness, please. So you're saying brave the crowds. Just brave go it. in and... Okay. It. It's never been here. Why won't we experience right. that? This is like history. Which is the counterintuitive Vegas advice, right? We always say, stay away from the strip if you can. But this no, time, this I is think your you're time. right, Heather. Yeah. Mm. This is your time. Sonia, mm-hmm. do you have a good piece of advice to fellow Las Vegans for the February? Uh, yeah, and this is like maybe the, the opposite of the Super Bowl <laughs> advice. But my my advice comes from my my granny heart, which is that this is the last cold month of the year, so use your oven. Um, I never <laughs> I never yeah. turn on my oven like in the summertime in Vegas, and so like this is like my last chance to like do all the winter baking that I love to do. Wow. All right. Mine is going to be like adjacent to the Super Bowl because I know a lot of people like the Super Bowl, but a lot of people love Puppy Bowl that always happens. <gasps> oh, yeah. And, oh those my are, God. and those are always rescues. And like there's a Vegas rescue that's going to be highlighted oh, in there, which I'm so excited about. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to inspire people that February is a great month to go to our shelters and go adopt a puppy. If you're inspired oh. by Puppy Bowl... Why like make so February sweet? your puppy bowl and and bring a little friend home. Who's, I think that's wait. Who's our Vegas rep in the puppy bowl? Yeah, our entry is uh, a little poodle mix called Lady Luck, and if you Google her, so cute. Uh, they have her festively dressed, so oh I think God, she's going to yeah. be the big star of Puppy Bowl. I cannot uh, wait. And I'm also excited about the opening of Esther's Kitchen, the new oh, five yeah! times the size mm. on February 29th. So that's going to be a leap day to to remember. Here, here. Yeah. Wow. So much. So much packed into 29 days. Uh, Sonia Cho Swanson and Heather Collins, thank you so much for joining us on our look at February here on CityCast Las Vegas. Ooh, thanks so much. Thank you. That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you enjoyed the show, go tell a friend and rate the show. Leave us a review. And if you're new here, you want to go subscribe to our morning newsletter. It is chock full of interesting information about our city, interesting news, and a great list of events for you to check out, including the stuff that we talked about today. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Till then, stay lucky. Stay lucky.